All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for coming down tonight. We are live from Books and Books in Coral Gables, Florida, so a note to our internet audience watching at home, if you're interested in tonight's book, we can ship it to wherever you are in the United States free of charge. Just call the number on your screen. This evening, Books and Books is very happy to present Ms. Maria Eugenia Giron and her new book, Sustainable Luxury and Social Entrepreneurship, Stories from the Pioneers. Ms. Hiron has 18 years of experience in the premium and luxury industry as executive, investor, lecturer, professor, and author. She earned both undergraduate and master's degrees in industrial engineering from ICAI, Universidad Pontificia de Comillas, and an MBA from the Harvard Business School. In this book, which she co-edited with Miguel Angel Gardetti, Ms. Hiron presents social entrepreneurs who highlight the relationship between personal values and sustainability, entrepreneurship, and innovation in developing and marketing luxury products. These pioneers outline how they had developed inclusive supply chains with poor and vulnerable communities. Their stories prove that luxury need not be a destructive force. Instead, this book opens a window on a world where entrepreneurial pioneers can change the rules of the game. Please give a very warm welcome to Ms. Maria Eugenia Giron. Muchas gracias. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you stories, stories of pioneers. The stories that we tell in this book, like Cavita Parmar, she founded a company called IOU and invented something that she calls the prosperity change. Her company IOU sells fashion, but when you ask her about what she does, she says, you know, I don't start my company to sell any fashion. I started IOU because I want to change the world. And this is the message that all of these pioneers are giving us. Not only Kavita, if we think of Cressy Wesling, this lady, her mission in life is to get the world rid of waste. And she has started with fire hoses, the fire hoses you see in the picture, the fire hoses of the UK. When fire hoses are used, they have a life, and after a certain time, they need to go into waste. And you can imagine that it takes a while for them to be degraded. She decided she was going to turn them into handbags, into accessories. These accessories are sold at places like Harrods. So now these fire hoses have become luxury products. She's been so successful that she already got rid of all of the fire hoses in the UK. She's started with a new material now. If you want to follow her example in any country of the world, she will give you the technology because her purpose in life is to get rid of waste. Oliver and Cameron, their obsession and their mission in life is linked to ring pullers, the ring pullers of the beverage cans that we have every day. They also decided to turn them into accessories. They invented this company called Bottle Top and they make beautiful accessories sometimes also in coordination with very well-known designers like Narciso Rodriguez. Guess how many ring pullers they have already recycled? It's in the million, 10 million already. Pepita and Alberto, they make people having by getting them together to knit. They make people proud because by knitting, they are doing something on their own with their hands. Their company is called We Are Knitters. And it's one of the stories of the pioneers in the book. Daniel Jutach, he is convinced that we will only be able to keep some of the uh, plants of the Amazon that are on the verge of extinction if we make them valuable for something. So she, he started a cosmetic company that is using all of these plants from the Amazon. 
he is convinced that because these plants now have a value, we will take care of them. Carrie Summers has redefined the whole supply chain of Panama hats. She has reinvented the whole economy around it. But not only that, after the Rama Plaza event, she came up with an idea which is called fashion revolution. So on the anniversary of Rama Plaza event, she invites us to do something, which is to wear our clothes the other way around, so that we show the label and we become aware where the things that we wear are coming from, where they were made, and who made them, and how. Diana Verde Nieto, she's another of our pioneers. And what she helps us is to identify which are the companies and the brands and the products that are aligned with the values of sustainability and responsibility. And what she does is in her platform, she gives this distinction to these companies and brands, the ones that allow us to follow what she calls a positive living. So all of these entrepreneurs are the ones that have started businesses in premium and luxury with an environmental point of view and with a sense of social responsibility. Miguel Angel Gardetti and myself, we decided a year ago that we wanted to give them visibility. We wanted to tell their stories so that they would become an inspiration for other people. Because these entrepreneurs, they are taking the leadership to develop new brands in premium and luxury with this environmental and social responsibility. But why is this happening? Why on earth did they choose the positioning of luxury and premium when they started these businesses? Isn't luxury about getting all of the resources that we have, turning them into products that we accumulate to throw away after a while? Or it's luxury also about craftsmanship, and exclusivity, and heritage, and creativity, and history, and intangibles. Isn't real luxury products made to last forever? What is more sustainable than something that is made to last forever? And that is made by someone who was dignified and happy in the process. But it's the industry. It's the luxury goods industry that has run away from this path. And there's a new generation, the generation that we call millennials, and also the generation Y, that they have been brought up learning about climate change. They have been brought up learning about how our planet is deteriorating, the scarcity of resources. And they are giving luxury a new meaning. And they don't want to be the generation that we think born to buy. They think luxury can only mean responsibility, sustainability, and fair trade, and green. And they are really redefining the meaning of a better product. Because they are convinced that luxury brands cannot hide a history and a story of destruction behind it. So do they really luxury and sustainability align? Or are they an oxymoron? Let's explore. This guy who is Oscar Metzabad, it's the founder of Osclin. It's probably the most successful sustainable fashion brand coming from Brazil. When you ask him why is it that he decided to create his own brand that is so successful in this luxury space, he gives a very clear explanation. He says, you know, there's two reasons. One is coming from the market. We can anticipate that there's a growth market which is looking for a product and is ready to pay a higher price for a product that puts them closer to their dreams and their aspiration of a better planet. But the other reason is that being sustainable and responsible is very costly. It really increases the cost of the product. 
So the only practical way to accommodate this higher cost is to have products with a higher price. So there's really no other way but to be sustainable than to be positioned as a premium product. Years ago, this lady that you will probably recognize already said that luxury is not the opposite of poverty, but it's the opposite of vulgarity. So we have seen that there are entrepreneurs taking the leadership. But the question always asked is, what about the corporations? What about the established brands? What are they doing? Are they taking steps? And they are. They are because they know that we are all aware of things. We start to know that to produce just a wedding band, you need to remove three tons of soil, or that to produce a t-shirt, you need to use up 3,000 liters of water, or that a lot of the species that we know are on the verge of extinction because we are using them up, or that 30% of the pollution caused by the textile industry is just linked to waste and how we dispose of things. So they are taking initiatives. Very often they don't communicate them. They are concerned that they will be nailed because not everything that they do is right. But I want to share with you at least a few examples of companies that are doing the right thing. Loro Piana and Senia, two Italian companies based on the production of textiles used to um, used in their production a very um, warm and soft uh, wool from Vicuña. A few years ago, 15 years ago, they realized that this animal, this species of the Peruvian ants, was going extinct. Only a few hundreds animals remain. So they took the initiative to start this project by which they would work with shepherds in the ants. They would teach them how they could get the wool without killing the animal. They gave these shepherds three-year contracts. So they would know that if they stayed in the region and worked with the vicuña, the wool would be uh, sold and they would be able to make a living. So it gave them a reason not to emigrate to the big cities. The result has been that after a decade, not only the number of vicuñas in the ants has gone up now to 100,000, which is a good thing. There's been economic development in the area. A lot of the people that were born there stay there because now they have a reason to live there. And the third element is that these two companies had access to a very scarce and valuable raw material. And the interesting thing about it is that both of these companies became much more valuable than when they what they were before. More than a year ago, one of them, La Ropiana, which was a family-owned company, was acquired by the largest luxury group uh, today, which is a group called LVMH. You've probably heard of it. The valuation for this company was about 30 times a bit that. That for those who know about valuation, it's something very high. And it's most probably linked to the value that was created by having the access to this very special and very unique raw material, which is the Vicuña wool. So when talking about whether there's a possibility of achieving success in protecting the environment, in developing a, having social development, but also uh, making a company more valuable, this is a very good example of how the three things can be reconciled. Loewe. Loewe is a Spanish company. It's part of the LVMH group, known for the handcrafted bags <coughs> made of very soft baby lamp leather in Spain. They realized that in order to keep on making their handbags in Spain by hand, they needed to train more craftsmen. Most of the craftsmen they had were getting very old and the, there was no way they were going to accommodate the growth they were planning for. 
They reached an agreement with the Spanish Employment Office a few years ago, at the time when the country was in deep crisis. They reached an agreement to recruit people unemployed, to train them as craftsmen, and to keep them, and to keep those that demonstrated that were going to be successful. They have solved two problems. On one hand, they have built their crafts capability, which is a key element of the value of the brand and the company. But also, in the process, they have contributed to solve one of Spain's biggest problems. And Tiffany, from the jewelry industry, which is one of the most destructive industries, they took an initiative also a few years ago, very interesting and very different to the ones we have talked about. They decided on one hand to ban coral, the use of coral in their jewels. But most important, what they did is made people aware that the reason they were banning coral is that it cannot be cultivated in a sustainable way. Once you use up a coral, it's going to take a thousand years to get it back there again. They used their windows in their shops throughout the world to explain people that it's bottom trawling, a fishing practice that is destroying the ocean bed, and specifically coral reefs, which is the places in the oceans where life takes place. These are some examples, but in the US you have beautiful examples. You probably have heard of a com company called Shinola that makes watches in Detroit with the people that were working in the automobile industry and that were unemployed. Shinola is probably one of the most successful companies and that has experienced most growth over the last few years in the watch industry. Brunello Cuccinelli, that was a company that did its IPO a few years ago. It's an Italian company focusing on Kashmir that has very strong social policies. Before their IPO, everyone was looking to see whether the market was going to value what they were doing or they were going to be penalizing the company for that. The IPO was very successful and the company is performing today still really well. So my professional life has been in this industry. It's a growth industry. Sales of the industry since we measure have been growing and the number of clients have been growing. So that's good because it's always good to have your professional life in an industry that grows because this opens up a lot of opportunities. But for me, the most important learning of these years has been to understand, as the industry understands, the value of scarcity, the value of exclusivity and the power of connecting with people's dreams. This is what this industry knows how to do. But my connection to the environment comes from working with this organization called Oceana. I joined and I serve on their boards for the last uh, seven years. And we have brought to Oceana the same um, strategy that luxury uses to make people uh, closer to their dreams and to uh, value uh, or um, to bring the value of scarcity. We have a new campaign called Save the Oceans, Feed the World, by which we um, encourage people to um, eat fish in a sustainable way, because if we protect our oceans, we will make them abundant and we will be able to generate protein for a billion people every day. In year 2050, we will be 9,000 people in this planet. We still haven't figured out how everyone is going to be fed. What we know and what we have figured out at Oceana is if we do the right things to the ocean and we protect them, they will be abundant and the oceans will be able to generate protein for a billion people every day for very many days. How were we going to communicate this message to consumers? How we were going to encourage everyone 
to eat in a sustainable way, we decided to align the best chefs in the world to our cause. The 20 best chefs of the world are working with Oceana now to communicate this message. Somos 7000 millones de personas y que muchos queremos comer pescado. Entonces, eh, lo que está sucediendo actualmente es que no hay pescado, que no hay pescado salvaje. Avant-garde, contemporary cuisine is no more like 10, 15 years ago, when uh, everything was like the ego of the chef was the first thing to show how great we were with magic tricks or fireworks. Es asumir también una responsabilidad que creo que nos ha venido dada, pero que en el fondo la tenemos que poner en la dirección adecuada. Si queremos sostener a nuestras especies, tenemos que revisar cada una de las etapas de la cadena y asumir responsabilidades. This is a learning experience for all of us. Ten years ago, no one talked about, or not a lot of people talked about, sustainable foods, and there's so much to learn. And we have to learn a lot. So what we need to remember is, if we don't do anything about this now, we may see things completely disappear if we're not careful. El océano es la gran despensa y hay que tener muy clara que por ahí pasa el futuro de la alimentación de la humanidad. Sometimes people say to me, this doesn't make any sense. You're trying to save the fish so that we can eat them? Well, here's why it makes sense. So luxury chefs luxury chefs are for Oceana an army to inspire other chefs and to inspire consumers to eat in a luxury way, which is nothing else but eating in a healthy way and in a responsible way. Because making sustainability Aspirational is a realistic way to change consumer behavior and consumer patterns. We know that eating small fishes, sardines and mackerel and uh, anchovies, is good for the ocean and is good for our health. But there's no one better than luxury chefs to make these anchovies and sardines and mackerel at the same time attractive, aspirational and desirable. Good for the oceans and good for our health. So luxury and sustainability really converge. Converge because they deal both with our values and our dreams and with rarity and beauty. And every day we make uh, choices and we decide which companies and which brands we are going to support. And we have the option 
to make uh, mediocre choices or we have the option to make a difference and change the world. And these chefs and these brands and these pioneers, they are a lighthouse to us, inspiring us and making aspirational for this good for the planet and good for the people. There is a Chinese proverb that says that uh, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. And the second best time is today. So choose responsibly, buy informed, and follow the inspiration. Thank you. Or comments for Ms. Hiron? Anyone? I know it's always tough for that first hand to go up. Anyone? Well, if there are no more questions or comments, then we have sustainable luxury for sale at the counter in the front room over there. Uh, reminder for our internet audience watching at home, there's time for you to call the number on your screen, purchase a copy of the book, we'll get it signed for you, and we'll ship it to wherever you are in the United States free of charge. Also a reminder to everyone that our live stream events are archived, so if you don't get a chance to watch them live, you can go to the Books and Books website, uh, go to the live streaming link, and any event that we broadcast from here at the store will be saved there for you to watch at your convenience. Uh, so for those of you here in the house, uh, Ms. Hirona is going to be signing over there at the table to the left of the screen and this has been such an interesting presentation. Let's please give her a big hand. Thank you very much. <laughs>